Okay, so here we are. So what I'm going to use is called Tree Plant. If you would like to go purchase a copy for yourself, we don't need it in our course. Um, but if you'd like to purchase one, um, you just go to treeplan.com. It's actually $59 for an individual license. Um, I'm just going to show it to you so you can kind of visualize uh, decision trees. And um, and then again, if this is something you end up doing lots of later, you might want to go get some sort of app. And there are a bunch of different ones too. Um, okay, so let's start building our tree. Um, so in this case, I have it under add-ins and decision tree. A new tree here. Beautiful. And we have two first alternatives. Either we hire the forecaster or we don't hire the forecaster. For now, I've considered the forecaster as free. If they were not free and I had to spend money on them, I would put it in right there. Like, let's say if I had to spend $30,000 for the forecaster there, I would put it right there. Let's just set it back to zero for now. Now, if we do hire the forecaster, what's gonna happen next is the following. I'm gonna change this to an event node with two possible nodes. Um, Okay, so if we do hire the forecast, so there are two possible outcomes. Either they forecast high demand, or they don't forecast high demand. So forecast, let's just call it low demand. Truly the opposite of forecasting high demand is forecasting not high demand. Uh, but anyways, um, okay, and then we add the probabilities of those in. If you recall, here they are right here back in our table. 0.755 for the first one and the uh, 0.245 here are the odds of the forecaster forecasting high demand or low demand. Okay, moving on. Now after the forecaster has forecasted high demand, we don't want an end node from there. What might happen is the following. We have another uh, decision to be made. Okay, um, and so we are going to decide based off of that forecast, this error is okay, by the way, if you end up using this, um, based off of that forecast, we can either build a new plant or don't build a new plant. Okay. Um, now, I haven't associated any costs. This is where you could put them in if you're doing a more complex problem. And so if it cost you, let's say, $52 million to build a new plant, you would put that cost in right there. Beautiful. From there, um, same idea as before, um, whether they forecast high demand or low demand, we still have the same decision whether to build the new plant or not. So what I'm going to go do right here, if I click right here on this decision, um, I can go and copy it. And then I'm going to put it in right there. Awesome. Good. Ignore all of the errors. Sorry about those. Okay, this add-in actually works well. It just likes to give that error many times. Uh, it's especially because I'm recording videos right now, so I'm really taxing the, the CPU on this poor computer. Okay, now, we can still build a plant or don't build a plant. Now, moving on from there, if we do build a new plant, something might happen. What is it? Well, either we're going to have actual high demand for the wood pellets or um, actual low demand. Actual high demand for pellets. And we're again just going to call it low demand. Um, okay, for these wood pellets. Uh, the odds of these things occurring are the following. So the odds of high demand, given that the forecaster forecasted high demand, well, that we get from our base rule, that is this 0.95. Okay, given the forecaster forecasted high demand, what are the odds of low? Get that right here, sorry, off our base as well, that is the uh, 0 0.046. Beautiful. And now we can start putting in our payoffs. If they forecasted high demand, we built that new plant, there was actual high demand, our payoff, we get from our payoff table, is a 13 and a half million. If they built the new plant, uh, there's actual low demand, then we lose 53.6 million. We can just get that off of our payoff table. Now what we start doing, um, and we are at the end here for each of these nodes. We leave these end nodes. Now I'm going to go copy this subtree. And paste it right here. It's quite tedious making these trees, but it does save you a lot of calculations if you have a very complex tree. Um, now if we don't build the plant, what's going to change? Uh, our payoffs are going to change. 
So this payoff, if we don't build the plant and there's actually high demand, our payoff is going to switch to 8.65 million. If we don't build the plant and there's actual low demand, our payoff is 1.6 million. These probabilities are still the same as above because the forecaster still forecasted high demand. Um, so we're still kind of in that subtree, if that makes sense. Okay, we are not done yet. So this is a long video on how to do this tree. Um, okay, now uh, moving on here. Uh, what if the forecaster forecasted low demand? Then a lot of the same things are going to happen. Either there'll be actual high, actual low. Um, okay, and so let's go copy this subtree right here. So adding is a little bit clunky, but it does help you get all of your expected values if you don't like calculating them any other way. Okay, now let's say we build the plant. Uh, if we have actual high demand, our odds are the following. Well, the forecasts are forecasted low demand. Going back here, the odds of high demand are 0.734. And here, the forecasts are forecasted low demand. The odds of actual low demand are 0.265. And then our payoffs are the following. So we built this new plant. Let's go grab our payoffs off of here, the 13.5 million and the $53.6 million loss. So if they built the new plant and there's high demand, they gain 13.5 million. If they built the new plant and there's low demand, they lose 53 million. Okay, carrying on here. Um, what you can also do too, if you want, you can lock your references to your payoffs. Um, I'm just going to manually, manually update them. Okay, I'm going to go also copy this subtree now. Copy subtree and paste it right here. Beautiful. Okay, so they don't build the plant. Um, the odds are still the same as before for high and low demand. Here they are. Uh, what we need to change are the payoffs. Those actually changed nicely. Um, the 8.65 and the 1.63 are great. Okay, so now we have our two options. After we've hired the forecaster, either the forecaster will forecast high demand or low demand. Okay, and then from there we can either build the plant or not. And from there we have actual high demand or low demand for each of the cases. We could also, if the forecaster forecasts low demand, choose to build the plant or not, and we have all of our outcomes. Finally, we could also choose not to hire the forecaster and just do this whole piece. So I'm going to copy this right here, starting with this node. I'm going to copy this whole subtree. This whole scenario also unfolds if we don't hire the forecaster. We still either choose whether or not to build this plant. So we're going to go to uh, add in, sorry, copy this subtree right here add-ins and paste subtree good and there we go and we're just going to need to update some numbers here so don't hire the forecast with the odds of actual high demand then just go back to the original sorry about that the original 90 percent the odds of low demand go back to the 10 percent that's all we have okay um, and then our payoffs are the following. If we build a new plant and there's actually high demand, we're back to that $13.5 million profit. If there's low demand and we built that plant, we're back down to the $53 million loss. If we don't build the plant and there's actual high demand, then we're up at the $8.65 million. If we don't build the plant and there's low demand, we're down at the 1.63 million, which doesn't seem like nearly as much, but it's much better than losing 53.6 million dollars. Okay, so here is our decision tree. Uh, let's also notice a few other things from this. You'll notice a one right here. Within every decision, it has a number in the little box. So one means there's two options here. I'm going to zoom out for a minute. Uh, there are two options, either to hire the forecaster or not. So the decision tree plan or tree plan here is telling me option one do hire the forecaster. It has a higher expected value. Right here we see it. So here's the 7.9, here's the 9.51. The difference between these is actually that expected value of sample information. 
Uh, if you had a cost associated with the forecaster as well, like let's say they cost you uh, $1 million, you'd put that as a negative in this case, then that would um, also factor in, and this number right here um, still is the 8.5, which is the better option to hire the forecaster. Um, the difference between, uh, let's see here, these two numbers will still be that expected value of sample information. And you can try playing with the hiring the forecaster and how expensive it is. Let's say we put it up at 2 million, then we change to option two, don't hire the forecaster. Uh, because this is a better option. So you can play with the cost of the forecaster and it will tell you which decision to make. So we're going to go up decision one here. Okay, carrying on, here we are within here. You'll notice this number is actually the expected value for this whole piece right here. You've hired the forecaster, what is the expected value of that whole um, kind of decision analysis uh, problem. Okay, moving on, let's say the forecaster forecasts high demand. Looking up here, there's a one in this box. What this means is one is yes, we should build this new plant. Two would be this bottom option. So yes, build that new plant uh, with these possible outcomes. And now let's say the forecaster forecasts low demand, then we have box number two, or sorry, a two in this box, which means pick option two, which is don't build the plant with an expected value of 6.78755 million. Um, okay, so all of your expected values and the appropriate decisions are contained within this tree, which is pretty cool. It takes a little bit to set it up, but it gives you lots and lots of information, and it also gives you a good map of what's going on. The only thing that's too bad here is that it's just, um, it's so tall here, it's almost hard to see this whole tree all in one window. Okay, that concludes how to do a decision tree um, in Excel uh, for this problem. Thanks for watching.